I guess, you know, sometimes, like any other person with any other job, when you look at something, you know what has to be done, you go in there and you do it to make it work, and sometimes you forget to stand back every once in a while and look at something for what it is, and it's surely the case here. I'm referring to the fact that I'm having to use a Felpro 1205 medium race port to line up with this head. I mean, it's there's just a little bit of meat on the inside to trim to get to the dimension. That just shows you Chevrolet's trend. And as I'm sitting here thinking about it, it really started with this one in 88 or whenever they come out with it to 94. They started going taller on the ports. Then here comes the um, the next animal in the adventure, the Vortec, which it's a lot taller, to finally the Cathedral Port LS1. You can just watch the engineering over the years. As they went taller though, they squeezed them and made them thinner. And this is no doubt the beginning of its infancy when they started going this route leading up to the LS1. Anyway, we're at 1205 and this is a gasket that will have to be used. Also notice that the center ports, which are the ones here, who, uh, you'll have to take the gasket and carve this out just a little bit when you get ready to put it on. But everything else lines up, you know, dead nuts. Uh, not an issue. Let's look inside the ports just a minute. And remember how I was bobtailing the guide and gnawing on that wall, uh, trying to pull it back. Now comes the dot to dot time. It's create, uh, where our ground has created quite the shoulder right here. You can see the bulge. Maybe you can see it. So now what I got to do is come in and I'm going to be using the butcher hog, the big double cross cut 9 16 egg. And I'm going to connect the dot, pull this hole down, come in and go on an outward strike here to pull in that wall. I'll also have to hit the straight wall side quite a bit and, and everything, but I just wanted to show you that's with the gasket on there. Let's remove that. Well, you can see this, the line is just right there. All I got to do is barely touch it. That part, there's not a lot of work on. The inside wall there is, but just wanted to point that out. And, and one other thing here, by the way, I've noticed that... Um, I don't have quite as many viewers on this as I do the Pro Comps or the LT1s or other things. And it's understandable because there's a lot of people that like the race performance stuff, but nevertheless, this head is a serious lesson of velocity. This is, once again, like I said, when GM went to this, and I can tell you this much right now. If you asked me, you say, Tony, if you could pick whatever head you wanted to, you're building a pickup truck for low-end torque, you want gas mileage, and I, you know, it was a quarter-ton truck, say maybe a 72 short bed or even a 78 or 80 model short bed, what have you. There's hands down, this would be the head I would use. I would do the modification I'm doing, everything I'm doing here, with, and I would uh, go to a 305 block and use the 400 crank, which is a 334. There's your truck motor, fellas, right there, because that 334 with a pair of heads like this is the bomb. You would probably get in excess of 20 plus miles to a gallon and have near 380 or more foot-pounds of torque, um, hook a boat to it or 4,000 pounds to the back of you and head to California. But anyway, this right here, we're getting ready to, to do that wall and pull that in, and we're going to be on the downside of this project once we do that. There are some other keynotes on the bowls. Uh, hands down, this was about the worst bowl job on a cast iron head that I've done in a long time because of the swirl and the irregular shape of it and the other things. It really took a lot of time to carve the bowls, but it will make a masterpiece when I'm done and for what it's designed for. Uh, out of this, there's 
actually not a whole not a great deal but there is a great deal it's kind of a 50 50 thing um this is a 1405 fell pro gasket i'm going to show you what it looks like on there and let's try to zoom in on it a little bit okay as you can see roof wise I don't know, I think this uh, Phillip has 1 and 5 eighths tube headers. This is as big as I can go. A 1405 is going to raise the roof, which I would love to do, but at the same time, you need a 1 and 3 quarter tube header to make that work. So the 1404, it gives me the width. Look at how much I got to move over side to side and straighten this out. Now notice I have got line scribed on the bottom, but you do not remove material away from the bottom of the runner. You never do this. Uh, I'll come and make my slice sideways. This is what we're going to use. The finger, we're going to set the clover leaf, and then uh, which will be the width and the top width. And that's it. I never grind on there. If I had it my way and it didn't cost what it does. I'd fill meat up to about here. I'd go in there and weld material and fill that up and bring that up, but just not applicable in this situation. So anyway, well, I'll go ahead, let you see what's going on here. We'll get back to this. Let's go over here and look at the uh, uh, 1404. Boom, there's the gasket on my head. The header gasket, as you can see, look at all the meat I can pull out of it with ways, but virtually none on the top, and you never touch the bottom. This gasket still is a good shape. It really is. I just wish I had a little bit more on the roof, but headers being what they are, you cannot. So anyway, let's start the clover leaf. I didn't mean to switch on y'all in the middle of the game, but we'll get back to the intake port and the final blending with the smaller egg and the swirl shape shortly. Let's concentrate on the exhaust for a while. This helps me break my monotony because when you're porting heads and you sit there and repetitively have to do the same mod each time, I'll usually switch after a while and go, wow, let's get this out of my head. Let's go to the exhaust side. I can't tell you how much difference that that can make when you're porting these heads and you're doing this stuff. Uh, it's good to take little breaks like that, get away from one thing because you become tunnel vision and focus. So, okay, that's all for now. Now that the clover leaf is done, and once again, that is a term that I refer to because it reminds me of a clover leaf of going in here and setting the corner depth. Let's get a little bit closer view. Okay, I've used this method. It was what I figured out on my own because back when I did it, the black art as we now know to be cylinder head porting, there was nothing on it and nobody wanted to teach you anything. So it's a way I use of marking things. As you can see, this is the burr I use, and this does my raw material digging, and I form the corners, and I bring it out to the edges, and you'll notice that the clover leaf is on the bottom on each side and the top on each side. Look at that chunk of material that has to come out. Now I'm ready to switch burrs, go in there, and pull the shape out to the corners that I had cut. And this will dramatically increase CFM. There's this trick and then the rounding and bullet nosing of the guide that's going to make all the difference on the world on exhaust CFM airflow. So anyway, that's where we're at now. Like I said, I usually go up in there about three inches as I try to pull it in. I just lay in that trench and keep drigging. Now I'm ready to switch furs. So that right there is known as the clover leafing. Let me see if I can get you in a little bit closer before it starts to fuzz on us. And you can just see on the tops and on the sides, I'm going to gain a lot of width. This thing is fixing to become really beautiful, and you'll be able to tell this head will pump some numbers. I will say at this time that in all my years, this is the most awesome TBI head I've ever done. I've never went this far on a throttle body head, but uh, this gentleman in Texas deserves every bit of it. He's been one of my favorite customers, so I roll out the red carpet for you guys to have a little bit of patience. I'm getting used to all this work, and 
uh, doing the videos. It takes a lot of time, so I try to give y'all tenfold what you pay me for, as much as I can. All right, anyway, that's the exhaust port side. Now, let's go in here and remove some raw material. Okay. I'm going to go in here and notice how I switch to the big egg. And I'm going to go in here. I start at the very back where the end of the trench is. And I'm basically just going to cut till the big chunk is gone and it starts to level into the um, trenches that I made. Now, okay, with most of the meat gone, I'll stop a few thousand short of bringing it to the line because I'm going to switch to the baby egg or this turkey right here to go in there and pull that in and roll the trench radius up into it when I'm done. That's, that's my digger that starts to form the shape. Then in the very end, I'll switch back to this right here to pull in the final shape and make it roll right into it. So I'm going to go ahead and dig some raw material out and get all that done and get back with y'all in a minute. On the short turn on the exhaust, the simplest way, notice how I've got the head angled in the position I have. Okay, look at that giant overhang lip right there. What I'm going to do is come in a straight down position with the big edge. First, what I'm going to do is just start gnawing down at it. When I get it about where I want, then I'm going to come at an angle and try to roll it and pull it in. Then you just go back and forth motion, pulling and grinding. You don't want to go too far with this big egg and come into the seat. I'll switch to the smaller egg and pull it in and take that ridge out. Because when you stand straight down at it, you don't want the fillet to be protruding outward. Let me give you another look at it. Now look at the difference here. Let me try to pull you in a little bit closer. You can see the dark shadow of the one on the right, which I haven't ground on it yet. But you can see this shadow. That's the fillet. Notice how this one just, you really, past the 60 degree angle, there's nothing in its way. This is what you're looking for. Now, it's going to come right off the seat, off that 60, and roll right into the exhaust port. Whereas this size, it would actually have to go up. Instead of going down and rolling over, it's going to go in, and it hits this big thing, turns it, and that's just definitely not what we're wanting here. One thing I wanted to point out is the difference from the ends to the center. Now watch this. It's fillets on the end ones, and I hated how Ford done it too, so does Chevrolet. The end ones usually have a different shape. Look how much the shadow or the thickness is. It goes way out, which means I'm going to have to come in from right here and just chop, 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 then start to roll and pull it back into there. All right, I'll let you get a shot at it. I think I can do this and show you. Roll and pull backwards and forth across that hump and pull it in.
Alright, now don't that look a wee bit better? Now all we got is just 60 in a row. Still a little sharp on the top, but I couldn't do it in getting y'all's way of the camera. But I just wanted to show you how I pull the short turns in on this and pull it downward so that we don't have overhang. Basically, the way that I like to do it, this is my preference, I don't like to see any of the seat or the sides once that 60 degree angle rolls off, we don't want no fillet or radius in the way. We want it picking off that 60 and doing its business, going swoop and turn and getting out of the way. All right. Now, finally, say goodbye to my little friend. Now, this is the big cutter. This is our big egg. It's now time to say goodbye to it because all the raw material that this cutter is going to do on the head is done. Now we're getting into our final reshape and blending which will be done with our much smaller head. In comparison, let's take a close up look at the exhaust port. In comparison, look at how much meat on the width. This is the one we use to do that. This is the one with the final blending. Both of them are heavy metal cross cuts. After this here, I'll switch to, the, to my little finger, but I'll go in here now, do my final blending, and pull all the clover leaf in on both intake and exhaust. The point I'm trying to make is, when we get to a point where we've used that one particular raw material cutter and it's done, this saves you time switching burrs all the time. Your consistency is going to be a lot better when you stay cutting the same mod on all the ports instead of trying to switch and do a port at a time, which is very crazy to do that. But anyway, this is our baby right now. We're going to switch to this one finish the exhaust, go back over to the intake, and now we're going to continue on the intake side, the bowls, the blending, and pulling it all in, because this business here has just about come to its end, thank God. <laughs> Alright, anyway, that's all for now, and uh, we'll continue on with the intake port with the conclusion of the TBI throttle body heads.